Hey y'all, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Ian. Uh, I'm from Free Ministry out in Green Sea, South Carolina. I'm with my daddy-o, Big Mike Fender Bosch. And uh, this is my buddy right here, man. Breathing in the chemicals. <laughs> if you looked at a family, you know, church, Catholic church on Sundays, if you looked at a family and said, man, from the outside looking in, that's a family I'd like to model, it's, it's the Fender Bosch family. Um, however, you had somebody like myself that even with all the love, all the, the best rearing, uh, lacked nothing, um, still just a, a void in my heart. Um, now you just keep prog progressing where marijuana turns to drinking and drinking turns to mushrooms and mushrooms to LSD and LSD to opiates and, and you start out with lore tabs and lore tabs graduate to perks and perks graduate to roxies and roxies graduate to oxies and then all of a sudden it's dollar a milligram you can't afford an eighty dollar pill but you can afford some heroin um then you go along and then you say man i'd, I'd never use a needle and then you're using a needle and then then it's like okay well i need to now do something because i'm at the peak of the drugs and then it's like doctors Oh, here, here's some Suboxone for five and a half years. And that's my biggest accomplishment is coming off Suboxone five and a half years. Start out at 24 milligrams, three strips a day. I don't even think they prescribe that amount anymore. Um, you know, way too much. But even the beginning of that, I'd have uh, a 90. I'd sell 45 to get 45 Roxy's and blow through 45 Roxy 30s in <laughs> 10 days maybe because I had my Suboxone right there as a crutch. Uh, fooling doctors, fooling drug tests. But it's, it's a cycle. And what I'd like people to understand is that I've got the best parents that you could have. I mean, raised, like we lacked, we lacked nothing. Um, and then it got so bad when methamphetamine came into the picture, because I was never really an upper guy. A um, lot of pride issues, character defects, a lot of you can't tell me anything, a lot of I'm so talented and I could just, just all this just BS. And then you add uppers to that and it's just a mixture of, of just a, a tornado, it really is. Um, to it got so bad, like this is my best friend who I, I love with all my heart, who's always been there for me, always like not judged me, was able to discern when the addict was talking and his son was talking. That means a lot to me. To where it got so bad that we got in a fist fight in August. It's like my lowest and embarrassing moment. A fist fight. Go off to jail. Um, matter of fact, I was living here for a couple weeks right by this little uh, condo that, uh, that my brother and mom um, and, and these guys have. But you get to a point where nobody wants you even around. Because you're just nothing but trouble. So I say all that to, 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 to say this, because of free ministry, there's a void in my heart that's now filled, it's whole, um, and free ministry and Jimbo, the Holy Spirit, God has put Jimbo in place of free ministry to facilitate what he wants. And because of our daily Bible studies, because of our Bible studies in the evening, because of our work program, because I'm learning obedience, you couldn't tell me anything, y'all. I was going to do what I wanted, when I wanted, and, and heck with the repercussions. But God brought me to my knees and, uh, and said, I'm going to rebuild you now. And, and now you're going to go out there you know, and help others. And, and, that's, and that's our goal. But if you're thinking about you know, coming to this ministry, it's been an absolute blessing. We asked for 60 days, and I'm now three and a half months in where it's such a powerful place that I could go back to my home. We, my wife and I just built a home. I could go back there. I could have gone back there like 45 days ago. But the Holy Spirit is leading me in a different direction. So I just wanted to have my dad here for a second to just share a message. If you're a family member, a mother, a father, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, somebody watching this saying, God, is there, is there any help? Is there any hope for my kid? We've done it all. We've spent the money that maybe you know, he can shed some light on what the ministry has meant from a father's perspective. Well, I can say <clears throat> beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, there were some extremely low points. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, you tend to compare, in our, my case, uh, I have three sons. He's the oldest, but another one, and of course, a younger one. So I, I have tended to compare 
Ian's eventual downfall to the other boys, wherein, wherein you kind of uh, you judge what's obvious, which is Ian's failing terribly, and then the other boys are doing pretty good. So you tend to go, well, I don't need this crap in my life. You know, I've loved him as much as I can love him. I've tried to help him as much as I can help him. Uh, I've wanted, to, on many occasions, never to speak to him again because of his behavior and his addictions. But realizing that, when you think about it, things happen in your life, and I am a Christian, so I believe in the power of uh, Jesus Christ and the Lord. So having said that as well, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that at this point in his life, and as far as our family is concerned, that uh, Jimbo in the, in the ministry has brought something in which apparently had been missing for some time. Now, you wouldn't know it by his actions when he was reasonably sober and all he's the greatest guy in the world. Then he would hit these tangents where it was absolutely disgusting behavior. Behavior so bad, at times, as Ian reiterated, we got in a terrible fist fight here not terribly long ago, all because I'd, I'd had enough of his crap. And he challenged me physically, which he should never have done. And of course, that was a low point for me as well. Uh, and so I would share with those who think there is no hope that pray that something good will happen. Well, I can assure you this. For some reason, well, I'm certainly not the one to explain God's power, but I do believe that the ministry has, in fact, uh, saved his life. So what happens from here? I don't know. I don't care to predict it. I, I would be foolish to try to do that. But I do know this. As long as God is the higher power in his life and not drugs, other people, or anything like that, that there's a, there's a great big world out there for him to fulfill. I'm a much older fella. I've had a great life. And then to live another 15 or 20 years if I can. But my main goal is to see, in this particular case, that Ian uh, is healthy and is able to conduct his life in such a manner that not that I can be proud of, but that he can be proud of, and his wife and his children. That, to me, is the ultimate goal of uh, this particular point in his life. Uh, I've seen the worst. I've also seen the best. And currently, all I hope for is the best. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too. Hang in there, Buster. Mm. Do good. Yeah, man. <laughs>